This morning, I've titled my brief message in all things, all things, all underlined, our providential God works. Amen. Yes. I take this text from Romans 8.28, where Paul wrote to the Romans, assuring them of the providence of God. I put the word providence in this title. It's not in the text in case you go back and read it. Because I believe that nothing happens in this world that happens by accident. Amen. Amen. As I was writing uh, this sermon, I looked for the meaning of the word providence that best conveys what I wanted us to hold on to this morning. I looked into the dictionary, the Cambridge Dictionary, it defines providence as an influence that is not human in origin and is taught to control people's lives, such as divine purpose. That was from the Cambridge Dictionary. The Collins Dictionary simply says that providence can mean God or a force that arranges the things that happen to us. But in the Heidelberg Catechism, which is being shown on the board, I found a meaning that really captures the essence of what I wanted us to, to uh, hold on to this morning. In question number 27, it asks, what do you understand by the providence of God? And the answer there says, the almighty and everywhere present of God, whereby as it, uh, whereby, as it were, by his hands, he upholds and governs heaven and earth and all creatures. So I want us to hold on to that meaning that all things, rain and drought, prosperity and poverty and shortage, all come from God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. The passage we read from Ruth tells of Ruth sending out her daughter-in-law to Obed. But with your permission, I would ask that we go back a little bit to the beginning of the story of Ruth, in Ruth chapter 1. So we get the context and for some, maybe refresh our minds as what this story is all about. In Ruth chapter 1, we are told that this event, the events of this story happened in the time of the judges, which is the period between the death of Joshua and the coronation of, of kings of Saul. It was a period that was mad with strife, civil war in Israel that almost exterminated one of the tribes, I think it's the tribe of Benjamin, and civil unrest all over the world. And we see a family, the Elimelech family, that decided to move out from Israel to Moab because there was a famine in the land. Mm. We all face crossroads mm. at one point or another. Amen. And most of us do not know what to do when we find ourselves at a crossroads. Sometimes we take steps in the wrong direction, mm. leading to setback or destruction. Yes. In this story, it seems to me that the Elimelech family took a, wrong step, a step in the wrong direction. When they packed and moved out of Bethlehem to go to Judah, we'll get to that, uh, to go to Moab, we'll get to that later. As they moved on to Moab, in this story, we are told that they lived there, we don't know how long, 
But in the course of time, Elimelech died. His two young uh, boys grew up, married foreign wives, but unfortunately, they also died. So that left Naomi alone with her two foreign daughters-in-law. Mm. After a period of time, Naomi decides to go back home, to go back to Israel, to go back to God. Remember at that period, the presence of God was somewhat confined to the geographical Israel, wherever Israel was. And God had expressly warned the Israelites not to have anything to do with the Moabites. Mm. So Naomi returns home. On the way, she, told, she tells these two young women, go back home. What, what I, why are you following me? I have no more children that will grow up and marry you, and I'm too old. I can't even bear a son. Even if I do bear a son now, would you wait until he grows up? And they, will marry, and they will marry you. So one goes home, and Ruth says, I'm not going. I'm going with you. Mm. That is where we'll start our, our talk this morning from where we read in Ruth chapter 3. We'll see that Naomi tells Ruth to go wash, do your hair, do your nails, put on your lipstick, put the perfume, and go lay down in a stack of hair by, the, by that guy's feet. I don't know if that is, if any girl can do that now. And she says, whatever you say, I will do. You know, when I read that, I was like, hmm, Naomi, you've been mischievous. Come on now. Yeah. How are you going to expect her to do this? But on second reading, I realized that she has an insight yes, that maybe I missed. Yes. Because God walks with us just the way we are Amen. at our level. Yes. In everything we do. Amen. That's why I, I, put, I chose that title. In all things, mm -hmm. our God works. Amen. Yes. Amen. It doesn't matter if you are the president of the country, the governor, the mayor, the, uh, the chairperson of uh, the board of a Fortune 500 company, or if you're selling peanuts and banana in the street corner, the way we interact with people, the way we interact with our family, with our husbands, with our wives, with our children, with our friends, with our neighbors, in everything that we do, the mundane things that we do and sometimes take for granted, God walks with it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. We see here that God chose to interact Ruth and Naomi at the level of Boaz. Boaz was a farmer, a farmer that raises barley. And for him, he was more concerned with his barley harvest. So it was proper that Ruth will interact with, her, with Boaz on this level, at the haystack on a farm. Our God deals with us in such a way that when we, I think I'll go back a little. When we go out these days from our homes back to our work, we often look in the mirror and make sure we, our hair is in the right place, for those of you lucky to still have hair, <laughs> and that we are properly dressed, because we know once we step out the door, there are thousands of cameras all over capturing our image. Mm -hmm. sure. So, we should be doing that spiritually. Yes, amen. amen. We amen. should be preparing ourselves. Yes. 
Because when we go out, mm. those that we are going to meet in the bus, on the train, in our offices, in the supermarket, wherever it is, the laundromat, the doorman, the crossing guard, all of them, God had programmed that you would meet them on that day. Amen. Yes, it's not by accident that yes. you are going to yes, ride God. with them. Yes. It's not by accident that you are going to meet a, a very good customer or a troublesome one that day. So as we prepare ourselves physically to look nice on the cameras that will be capturing us, let us remember that we have a bigger camera in heaven yes. Yes. that's recording even our thoughts. Amen. It's not just how we look. It's not just what we say. Amen. What we think Amen. is being captured Amen. in heaven. Hey. Hmm. That is one power <coughs> powerful lesson that I want us to hold on to this morning. The other is that God overrules, you know, providentially overrules the lives of the people even when we disobey his rules. Elimelech's family, as I mentioned before, they knew that God didn't want them to go to Moab. They knew that they were forbidden from marrying foreign wives. Yeah. Yes. Still, they went ahead. Amen. That did not deter God. That did not stop him from still working out his plan. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In the end, we see that through Ruth, yes. God's providential plan yes. of linking this family to David came true. Yes. In the text, that I mentioned Romans 8.28, uh, <clears throat> there is a part B. Sometimes we always use the part A. I want us to look at the, the part B of that text. It says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, Hallelujah. who oh. have been called according to his purpose. Amen. 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 Okay. I assume that all of us here have been called according to God's purpose. Yes, yes. If you are not sure of that, we'll start by accepting Jesus into our lives and asking God to show us his way. Yes. But let us look at Ruth and wonder if he, she was called according to God's purpose. Yes, she was. Yes. Here was a girl who, I don't know her age, she, she was probably in her late teens when she married. Unfortunately, she had no child. Her husband died. Her brother-in-law died. Her father-in-law died. And she still insisted, I'm going with you. Yeah. I mean, if that were be my place, they would run away and say, oh, something is wrong with your family. I'm not coming. <laughs> That's true. Yes, amen. It's true. Yes, yes. All the, all the yes. men are dead, and you want me to come to do what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because God had called her. God had providentially picked her, said, yes. I'm going to come to Moab, even though I told my people not to go to Moab. I will come to Moab and take you, and through you, I'm going to get yes. my son David. Again, remember that God sees all that we do. So when we interact with people, wherever we go, God knows. God has sent us to meet those people. Whether they drove by or forced you out of your lane, it was programmed that you meet with them, how you react to them, how you deal with them, will make the difference between them saying, thank God I met this guy today. You know, we often experience when we go to an office perhaps where we've been having problems and you meet a very nice person who takes care of you. Yeah. 
Most of the time, I got reactions. Oh, thank God I met her today. Amen. Yes, you're right in thanking God because He programmed it. Amen. He directed you and that person to meet at that particular time. In all things, our God works. This story also reminds us of God's sovereignty. In Psalm 103, verses 19, he says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his sovereignty rules over all. This means that God controls everything. Like we sang in the song earlier, he has the sun and moon in his hands. He holds the whole world in his hands. Sometimes, though, we begin to wonder and to doubt. As I was writing this, I heard in the news that over 200 people died in, in Valencia, Spain, from flood waters. Yes, yes. And I was asking myself, why? you know, why? Amen. Where is God in this? Amen. You know, we are all creatures. I can't ask God why he did what he did. But the Bible tells me that he is in control, and I believe it. Yes. Okay? The war going on in Gaza, in Sudan, in Ukraine, all over the world. Why? We have no choice over that. But our, our, we have to rely on the word that God is in charge. Amen. You know, times like this, some of us may be tempted to think that God controls only <laughs> some aspects of our lives and not the other. Mm. Oh, it's my life. I'll do what I want with it. <laughs> it's my body. It's my hair. It's my leg, whatever. God has control over everything because yes. he owns everything. Amen. Yes. everything. Mm. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 tells us, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him... All things consist. We're talking about a disappointment that some of us have with the election. Again, I say God is in control. Some of our leaders sometimes are arrogant and unfortunately they forgot that God as a way of dealing with arrogant kings and arrogant leaders and arrogant uh, people. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar and King Herod will testify to this. Yes. They were both arrogant and God dealt with them. Nebuchadnezzar was lucky. God had mercy on him, changed his mind and he, and he regained his, his sums, himself. King Herod was eaten by worms. When people were praising him as a god and he was relaxing, enjoying the praise. praise. Mm -hmm. So, we commit everything to God. Yes. Amen. He will take care of us. Amen. When we look at what is going on, you know, sometimes it's, it's amazing to realize that God, who sovereignly rules heaven and earth, is also in, interested in our own individual lives. But I want to show you, we are not living in a vacuum. Okay? We are living in the presence of God. He has revealed his word and his promise to guide us each day if we trust and obey him. Our God is a God of possibilities. Is there any situation in your life which which needs an improvement, or an improvement seems impossible, God will turn it around. Is there any obstacle hindering your joy? The Almighty God will roll it away. 
Remember, God changed the name of a slave girl called Hadassah to Queen Esther. That's right. Hmm. He turned what was supposed to be a fiery furnace into an air-conditioned lounge for the three uh, Hebrew uh, men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. He shut the mouth of the lion for Daniel. Yes. Don't ever doubt God's ability to do the impossible in your life. No matter what you're going through, God, the maker of all things, will turn it around. Finally, I want us to remember that nothing can touch us apart from his providential will. God loves us. As we read in Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who build it. Unless he guards the city, the watchman says, stays awake in vain. Mm. God is our everlasting shield that protects, loves, and guides us. He has your names tattooed on his palms. Amen. Remember Isaiah? Amen. Isaiah 49, 15. He asks, can a woman forget her nursing child? that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb. Even these may forget. And God says, yet I will not forget you. I have engraved you on the palm of my hands and your walls are continually before me. Sometimes God may allow painful situations for reasons we may not understand. But through our scripture, we found examples of God's faithfulness in turning difficult situations around. Remember the story of Joseph, yes. Amen. who experienced betrayal by his brothers and was sold into slavery. He endured years of imprisonment. Yet, in the end, God used Joseph's trials to position himself to position him as a key leader who saved his family mm. and the nation of Egypt from famine. Yes. Life is filled with challenges and uncertainties. We encounter un un unexpected setbacks, disappointments, and trials. Even these trials can shake our faith mm. in God's plan. In such moments, it is crucial we remember that we are not alone. Amen. We serve a God who is aware of every circumstance we face. And he remains in control even when our circumstances seem overwhelming. Remember the song why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows rise? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend he is, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Yes. God has his eye on us. If we truly believe that God's arm reaches everywhere and nothing is too difficult for him, it will change how we live. Our doubts will be silenced. Our confidence in the promise of his word would increase. God is the Alpha and Omega who knows the end from the beginning. And he has the power to do all things. It's not in his character to abandon a project. 
He reconnected Moses to his destiny at the age of 80. He destroyed the giant occupants of, Ten of Canaan to fulfill his promise to Israel. Yes. Amen. He sent his son Jesus, the Messiah, as the savior of mankind, and he gives us the Holy Spirit. Let us remember that God is always at work, even amid at our most challenging circumstance. Embrace his sovereignty, knowing he holds your, your life in his loving hands. Let us live each day with the assurance that our Heavenly Father is working all things for our own good. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen.